Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess, and today we're gonna to create PDFs out of our data from our forms, but we're not gonna use any premium licenses. So no premium licenses for this. We're gonna use a new PDF feature in Power Apps. So if you're new here, the last couple of weeks we created a form, we used a Microsoft Word template, we created a SharePoint site, we made content types and we made a library and we did all this without any premium licenses. Then the next video that we did, we integrated Power Apps with SharePoint and then we also did our templates. And so today I was thinking, hey, let's do this with PDFs, but let's keep it free. No premium licenses from Microsoft. So honestly, I've never done this before. This was just an idea. This makes me think of a quote and I believe it was from Picasso and it was something like, I'm always doing that which I cannot do in order to learn how to do it. All right, so this was just an idea. I wanna keep it simple. You guys can make a template way more complex than what I'm gonna do. But I have a template here, it's just a happy birthday template, and we're gonna fill out some information on the template. So I took a screenshot of this template here from Microsoft Word. And so we're gonna to go to Microsoft Power Apps, and we're gonna have two screens. On our first screen is gonna be our, our form. Now you could make this a button click on a Power Automate Flow to make it loop through everyone's birthday, that's possible. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep this simple. I'm gonna to go to templates and do a portrait print. I want this portrait uh, template and I'm gonna delete that button actually. So now we have two screens. On screen two, I'm going to insert a image. Now you have to be careful if you do the background and I found this out the hard way. If you do the background of the, of the screen, it won't come through when we print it. But for right now, I have my image here. I'm going to upload my image. It's my happy birthday image and I'm going to post that in there. All right. So I have my happy birthday image and we'll make it, you know, somewhere, you know, about that size. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a container. I'm just gonna do a container and I'm gonna put it in a regular container, not horizontal, not vertical, just a regular container. I'm gonna put it over my image here and then I'm gonna insert a few text labels. So we'll have one happy birthday, maybe your name will go here. And then let's say I'll just copy this and then the manager's name or company name can go here. And finally, we'll have some comments, right? We wanna make sure that our happy birthday message has some personality to it. There's some comments. We'll put those in there. And so we'll leave it just like that. So I'm gonna rename this one. So label one, we'll rename to label uh, B-Day name, birthday name. Uh, this one will be maybe company name, label company name. Now you could do manager name, you could do multiple people's names if you want to, but we'll just do company name. Maybe you want department name? Maybe you want department name. And this will be label comments. All right, so we have all three of those inside our container one. So we're gonna go back to screen one and I'm gonna insert uh, some text inputs, and we're doing all this in classic right now. Maybe you want to try this out on modern, but I'm just going to do it in classic today because we're using containers. My idea is if your entire app cannot be modern, don't do modern yet. That's, that's what I've come up with yet. But if you can do your entire app with modern, then do modern. But containers right now uh, on this date are not modern power apps. So I have three text inputs, and also this is a simple, simple form. And then I'm gonna have some more text labels. And this one will probably be bigger because this will be our comments. Now for this one, we're going to get rid of the text input. I'm just gonna make it blank. But I'm gonna rename these. So this one will be text B day name. So just matching what we did before. Rename text a company name. 
Maybe department name would be smarter, but yep. Uh, text comments. And now we want to fill in each of these birthday name. Um, company name and comments. All right, so we have a very, very simple form. So we're going to insert a button and this button is just going to go to the next screen. Next. And it's just going to navigate to our screen two. You probably want to rename your screen. And let's do a, a cover right. How about that? A cover right, just to be a little different today. Let's fill in some information. So Andrew Hess, company name is Hess IT Solutions. And comments, congrats. You did it. One more year at Hess IT Solutions. Uh, your project work was incredible. Now for this field or this text input, I probably want to change this to multi-line text. So let's see, can we change this to multi-line or so that it wraps right here, mode, multi-line, all right. So now let's click next. And for each of these fields right here, the BDA name is gonna be equal, equal to text, BDA name dot text. Now if you're using modern, it would be dot value. So you gotta be careful um, between classic and modern things change. Microsoft likes to mess with this. Uh, text company name dot text. And let's say text comments dot text. Um, let's change some things up here. Let's keep, let's move this down. Let's change our name. Let's give it a different font, maybe some cursive and a larger size. So happy birthday, Andrew Hess. So we have a super, super simple form. Now you can make this more complex if you want to. And up right here, we're gonna insert a button. So we're gonna have a button up here and this is going to print for us. Uh, print, save, create PDF, whatever you wanna call it, that's what it's gonna do. And so on this theme, since I'm just thinking about this, I'm not gonna to go to Power Automate and do all this work. I'm just gonna click right here on the Power Automate button and I'm gonna create a new flow. And this flow, I'm just gonna click Create Flow. And today we now have Power Apps V2 trigger. So we have a Power Apps V2 trigger and we're gonna have two inputs. The first input is going to be the file name and the second input is going to be of type file, and it's going to come through as file content. Now, we only have one more step to our Power Automate, so this is kind of nice. And that's going to be to create a file. And where are we going to create that file? Now, we could do OneDrive, but we're going to do SharePoint. You know, you could send this in an email directly if you wanted to, you know, send an email. So we're going to create a file, and we're going to save it to our SharePoint site. So it's the same SharePoint set I was using last week. It's our Word templates. I'm gonna click on the folder icon here and I'm gonna put it in our document library. And the file name is gonna be file name. But what's really important here is that we give it .pdf. We have to tell it that it's a PDF file. So don't forget that .pdf and the file content is file content. And literally that's just about everything except for I would recommend to rename your flow. So up here in the top left, uh, create B-Day um, PDF. So that's just renaming our flow. So when we call it in Power Apps, it'll be easy for us. And we'll just click save. That's the entire flow. Super simple. That's all we need to do today. All right, so on our print button, we are going to call our Power Automate. So right here, I'm gonna say create BD, B day PDF, and notice that it gives us the IntelliSense about dot run. We want that one. All right, first, what it's asking for is the text of the file name. So this will be maybe my name. Let's do um, text, bday name dot text. 
And we could probably, if we wanted to, we could add in the date to make sure that we get a unique value every time. So now we could do now. So now every time we're gonna get a unique value of our file. If we didn't want a unique value, we could overwrite every single time and, and take out the date. So I'll do comma. Now see the IntelliSense, uh, Microsoft is helping us here. File with the squiggly bracket. I'm gonna pull this down. So let's open this up, pull this down. File, squiggly bracket. We need another squiggly bracket and then name. So this is, built into the metadata of the PDF. So I'm just gonna say test.pdf. That really doesn't matter because we're not gonna use that name. And then now, this is the important part, content bytes. And the content bytes is gonna be the PDF of what? With the PDF function, we can do a screen, a container, a gallery, but for this one, we're gonna use a container because we put everything in container one. Container one. Honestly, we'll do a squiggly bracket, squiggly bracket, and a parentheses. Now that I thought about it, we want to pull this image right here and put it into container one and send it to the bottom. All right, so now we have our label comments and our image is in the container, not just on the screen. So let's go ahead and test out our Power Automate. So we'll just hit the print button. So I made a very large error. Now that I thought about it, instead of adding ampersands, I added plus. So that's my error. I'm gonna leave it in the video. I want you guys to see that I make mistakes. Even though I've been doing this for about four years now, I'm still making mistakes. And since I'm making mistakes, I'm gonna quote someone else. I'm, you know, failure is just success in progress, right? So I've been growing for about four years. I failed, success, is just failure in progress. And that's by Albert Einstein. So I'm gonna quote someone else here. And so now let's go ahead and give it another try. I'm gonna go ahead and print. I forgot another major important step and that right now in Power Apps, we need to go to settings, upcoming feature, and turn on an experimental PDF function. It's very important that we turn that on. Now, if you're watching this video in the future, the PDF function may be somewhere else. Maybe it's not experimental. Maybe you're not using classic Power Apps at all. So things may change. But now that we have that on, let's go ahead and check out how what it says now. I believe everything's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and press print. So now we can see that button is held down. Power Automate's running. We got no error. So now we have our success in our SharePoint library with our name and a nice unique date, number, and time. We click on it, we open our file. We now have happy birthday, Andrew Hess from Hess IT Solutions with our comments, our pictures, our images. Finally, we have success and we have progressed. So that was just a very simple flow. Now there's so much more you can do with this. Now to think about this, right? Imagine you had a SharePoint list or you know uh, an Excel file even. People say don't use Excel with Power Apps. Imagine you had an Excel file with everyone's birthdays in there. You could loop through and create PDFs for everyone. Although then the comments would not be unique, right? You wanna give some feeling behind your comments when you're filling out a happy birthday to your employees. It needs to be unique. Don't just make a, you know, a regurgitated power automate that just kind of sends it out to everybody. No one's going to be happy about that. Printed that out. Now let's say we wanted something else. Let's say we had our form here. Let's do another new screen. Template. Portrait. And I'm just going to take our print button here. I'm going to paste it back in, okay? And this one we're going to do another container another container. Let's say we had a, a beautiful form, right? What we can do inside this container is do a multi-line or an HTML, HTML text. And we can put that in our container. 
and then we can start filling out our form and we could pull in galleries we could pull in you know different galleries i have a whole video on this on how to convert a gallery into html but we can pull in let's say um your name and then here we have text bday name dot text and notice that progress has been made i, I use the n percent and then we could do a br and then an ampersand um, company name. And make sure there's spaces in there. And then ampersand text, company name dot text. And this is just basic HTML. BR is just a break, means the next line. And then finally, we'll have our comments. Ampersand text comments dot text and we just have that filled in. So now we can see our nice fields in here. We could give it some more BRs if we give it more breaks. Give it some more spacing. Maybe we want the font size to be a little bit bigger. Let's go to 20. So now imagine if you filled out an entire form. You filled out an entire form and uh, printed a P PDF. So we can just take our print button here and instead of container one, we'll do container two. Container two here. And now we can take it, press play, print. So now imagine you had this beautiful form and you wanted a PDF. So you can easily just come in here, refresh. We have a new date and time with my name. Open up this one and that's our old one. Let's check out the other one open up this one that was a few seconds ago actually. And we can see our beautiful form filled out. So you could literally have this printed out. You could then come to Power Automate Flow. You could send an email, Outlook. You could send an email to yourself or to whoever. Let's say we send an email to ourselves, um, PDF attached, happy birthday for the attachments content right here. So we have attachments, we'll do the lightning, come down to file name, make sure to do the dot PDF. So it knows that it's a PDF content type. And then do file content here, click save. It may give us a warning to refresh our Power App, but it did not. So we'll go to Power Apps, make sure to refresh. Gave it a little error while it's refreshing. All right, and so now, I'll just press play, press print. So we should get a new file. So we got a new file in our SharePoint right here a few seconds ago. And that's our PDF. Now let's check out Outlook. We got a happy birthday. Oh, look, it even, you know, Microsoft automatically did that. Open it up and you can see that the file is there complete also and has been sent to an email. So now that you have the ability to create a PDF, you can send it to OneDrive. You can create a Power Automate to create many PDFs. You can send your PDF in an email. You can store it in SharePoint. It's just a nice way to create a nice, easy document template. We could do the same thing. Now that we did it once, the same thing is going to happen on our page two. So if we hit print here, it's actually going to do the same thing. It's going to still email. So if we check out my email, PDF attached, we can see that we have the nice PDF email here that was uh, made in Power Apps. So this was just another way to do document templates in Power Apps. This is gonna be the free way to do it. Um, there's no reason to use any kind of word connector template. We're not doing Word, we're just doing PDFs. So if this was helpful to you, my name is Andrew Hess. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week.